So my father chose his gold-digging wife over me now he's begging for help after she ruined his life. I, male 30, have been no contact with my dad, Hank, 58, for the last 10 years and have only had interaction with my mom. Our relationship was already on shaky ground as he had divorced my mom, 55, when I was 16 to get with his secretary, Chiara, female 37 right now, who was closer to my age than his. It was obvious that she was a gold digger and I and my sister, female 27, both agreed to this. How dad decided it was okay to break apart decades of a loving relationship to go after a woman who was an entire generation separated from him, I don't know. The divorce ended up granting mom full custody, and we had pretty minimal contact with dad. He had moved to the New Haven with Chiara while mom sis and I stayed in Connecticut. At first, he used to show up for birthdays and then it cut down to calling us on our birthdays and then turned to basically nothing. Credit where it's due, he paid alimony and child support on time as he was running a hugely successful business, but emotionally, this guy was barely there. When I turned 18, I got an amazing opportunity. I had gotten into Yale, but due to a bunch of housing mix-ups and a few administrative hurdles, I didn't get a dorm room on campus, so I began to look around at places to rent nearby. Naturally, I called Dad and asked him for advice, and he did something super generous. He asked if I would like to move in with him. I was taken aback at first and told him I'd let him know after I consulted my mom about it. She was enthusiastic about the idea and it would help me save up some money and also provide a chance to build a relationship with my dad. She knew that I resented him a lot, but it had been two years since the divorce and she thought I should at least try and have a connection with him. Urged on by her logic, I called dad back and gave him the green light. I'd stay in his guest bedroom for the first semester at least and see how it goes. After I turned college and moved in, I'll admit dad was a really good guy to room with. He was fun, had interesting and useful advice about college life and genuinely took an interest in me and my coursework. We often went out on weekends going to do goofy stuff like paintballing or go-karting. It was a lot better than I expected, and while I made it clear that I still thought he was an ass for hurting mom, I was open to the idea of fostering a relationship with him. However, Kiara didn't enjoy my presence at all. I mean, she didn't do anything outwardly mean with me, but like there was just something about her vibe that was off. Whenever I was around, she was incredibly shitty. Sometimes it almost felt like my presence there was obstructing some grand plan she had. But as I said, it was just a vibe. I couldn't prove anything was off. Maybe she just didn't like the fact that a remnant of my dad's old life had come to stay and she knew that I thought she was a gold digger. So there's that too. I mean, she was living off of dad's money. She didn't work, but stayed at home most of the day. Sometimes she'd go out shopping or on trips around the area, trophy wife much. I looked at her as an extra roommate, and she thankfully never tried to act like my mom. My suspicions about her behavior got confirmed one afternoon. Dad had gone out for a week on a business trip, and I had been staying at a friend's place working on research paper together. Ha Kiara was alone at the house for a was at least meant to be. However, I had left some of my laundry at Dad's place and went over to pick it up with the spare key he had given me. When I got over to the house, I saw a car in the driveway that wasn't ours. Slowly walking in, I heard loud chatter and laughter from the living room and eavesdropped. There was a male voice and a voice that was Kiara's talking about embezzling money from Dad's company. It was brazen. I heard the male voice say, We made some changes in accounts receivable and there's about $100,000 in unrecorded revenue. That's for us, and it's all risk-free. If anyone takes the rap for it, it'll be Hank. I was shocked, and I needed to know who this guy was. For some reason, his voice sounded familiar, so I peeked around the corner and saw Dad's accountant. He'd often come over to the house to discuss dad's assets and investment opportunities, but I had never seen him so buddy-buddy with Kiara. They were chatting up a storm, celebrating with two glasses of wine. If I had to guess, this relationship wasn't just two con artists working together, but it was sexual too. Making sure I wasn't noticed, I slunk back out and relocked the door. Unfortunately for me, all I had to prove this to dad was my word. I hadn't taken any pictures or gotten any concrete proof. However, I was hoping I could convince him as soon as he came back from his trip. Once he did, I told him about what had happened in private, and he immediately laughed it off. He said that his accountant had always had his back, and this idea of unrecorded revenue was something his eagle eye would spot anyways. I guess he had a big ego about how much of a grip he had on the business, because when I pushed on the topic he got offended. That first conversation ended without much happening, but I knew that Dad would probably mention this to Kiara. Probably joking about the wacky storm I had come up with, dismissing it as a joke. Once this happened, I knew that she was on to me. Her attitude towards me became even colder and for some reason, Dad also began talking to me less and less.
One day he sat me down and told me to respect boundaries, stating that Kiara had told him that I had been flirting with her. I told him this was a lie, but yet again he believed his wife more than me. The final straw came when one day Kiara pretended like I had tried to make a move on her while Dad was in another room and she put on a good act. Since Dad was already wrapped around her little finger, this led to him nearly coming to blows with me and kicking me out of the house. I was out on the streets lugging around three suitcases. I stayed at a friend's place for the night and explained the situation to my mom and sister. They drove up to New Haven and helped me find a flat and also vouched for me and my trustworthiness in front of Dad, but he was having none of it and cut us all off. Even worse, he threatened to cut off child support and alimony by throwing his fancy lawyers at us and said that the only way he'd support my sister's college education would be if they agreed to go NC. He also said he wasn't going to pay one more red cent towards my graduation. For my sister's sake, we agreed and I had to take out a student loan to make sure I didn't drop out. It's been ten years since then and our family has put dad behind us. After my sister graduated, he stopped talking to us entirely. Honestly, none of us talk about him anymore except in the context of what a douchey he was. In fact, I never even got to see him around in New Haven after I graduated and honestly had no clue what he had been up to. However, all of that changed last week because I got a text from an unknown number claiming to be my dad, revealing details of my life that only he would know. Curious to know what had happened, I set up a meeting with him in a few days and then invited my mom and sister to come with me. They agreed and we all went out of curiosity more than anything else. I was shocked to see how different my dad looked. He was haggard is probably the best way to describe it. Usually seen in a suit and with a fancy watch on his wrist, Dad was now dressed in a plain shirt and had lost all the bogey outfits. When I sat down, he immediately said, Son, I should have listened to you. When I asked him what about, he spotted about that bitch Kiara. So it turns out that after he kicked me out, Kiara began to siphon more and more money out of Dad's account. When it was finally discovered by the IRS, she and the accountant bounced, leaving Dad to take the flack. The eventual realization that I had been telling the truth all along was too little, too late to save his ass. He was charged and sent to jail for a year, and his whole business sank to the ground. After he got out, he had to start from square one and left New Haven due to the hit his reputation had taken. Apparently, he was now settled in New Mexico running a struggling business. As for Kiara and the accountant, they were nowhere to be found. Dad even tried to hire a pie to bring them to justice but his trail ran cold after discovering they had moved somewhere in Thailand. I was sympathetic to his plight, but at the same time, I was thinking, I told you so in my head. I couldn't get the image of him kicking me out of his house out of my mind. When we moved on to talking about other things, I mentioned that I had been doing well in my career. I was a little skittish about it because I feel like Dad wanted me to extend a helping hand of some kind. I was right because he ended up telling me he was looking for investors in his business and I politely declined. I could tell that he was too embarrassed to push the topic, but his mood dropped like a stone. After he left, I felt like I shouldn't have shut down his plight for help so quickly. I mean, it has been ten years since the incident. Would it help to start our relationship again? Update 1 So, a few days after the call, I got a call from the local correctional center. Apparently, Dad had been drunk in public and hurling obscenities. For some reason, he gave the cops my number. I went over to bail him out, and he had sobered up. On the car ride back, he burst into tears about having nobody in his life. I felt really bad and I asked him to come to stay over at my place for a bit. At least for as long as he's in New Haven. Update 2 Dad's been staying at my place for the last few days, kind of like a reversal of my time in college, Imau. I've gotten to learn more about his business and his life and he's been screwed over badly. But his work in New Mexico has potential, to be honest. And I feel like investing in it won't be the worst idea. However, I kind of want to confront Dad about his behavior with me at first and get an apology. Update 3 I was able to have a heart-to-heart -heart with Dad and he regrets not apologizing to me first things first. He apologized not only to me but also to Mom and my sister. Without getting into it, we seemed to be on a better track than we were all those years ago. He might have been a terrible person, but this experience seems to have changed him. He's heading back to New Mexico next week, and I'll visit him in a bit to discuss his business. NTA, you've got a big heart op. Although Hank seems to have changed as a person, I wouldn't be able to form a relationship with him after what he did. But you're right, 10 years is a long time. NTA, but I hope your mom is cool with the olive branch you've extended. Next story. I, 15, female, have been wanting to get a job for a while to save up for this car I want. It's in great condition and at a reasonable price, $5,000. I have chronic pain issues and part of those issues are standing, sitting in one place too long. I like to be active. 
Well, I was going to wait a year to get a job because I go to a school where you work for the school and I'll have my CNA by the time I'm 16 and my starting pay will be around $18 to $20. Minimum wage in my state is $14.24 an hour. Anyways, about the conflict. My sister, 20, female, hasn't done anything since she graduated high school in 2020. She isn't in college and she has never had a job. She also doesn't have her license. We are not rich and are a one-income household. My mom works two jobs and sat us down recently and said that she is exhausted and that working two jobs, most days she's working 17 hours, is killing her and really affecting her mental health. She said she knows it's a horrible thing to ask her children but if one, if not both of us could get a job and help out that would be great. My sister threw a fit saying that this was too much and that she wasn't ready to get a job yet and that I had to because I'm more capable than she is. I told my mom that I would be more than willing to get a job but that my sister has to as well. My sister continued to throw a fit until I called her a lazy piece of shit and that she was useless. She attacked me and then ran upstairs to hide in her room. My mom said she understands and that she will talk to my sister and that this responsibility should not be put on a 15-year-old, but that I shouldn't have said what I said. Edit. Thank you so much for the responses. I really appreciate other people understanding my chronic pain. I showed my mom the post. She laughed at most of the comments about my sister lolll. My mom sat my sister down last night and said she's giving her one month to get a job or move out. My sister got angry and said she had nowhere else to go and my mom said not my problem. My mom has stopped paying for everything that has to do with my sister, subscriptions, games, etc. I am going to get a job for myself, already applied to a farm I want to work at. The first month of working I'm going to save some money and if my sister does get a job I will contribute some. I said above that I'll be a CNA by 16 and that in the junior year we make more than minimum wage so I'll only need this job for a little over a year, and then I'll be making more than my mom makes at her second job. I have a long way ahead of me but I'm excited about what I'll be able to do with my nursing. Also when I get my car we already had an agreement that I have to pay for my own insurance and gas so I need to save more money aside for that. It may seem unfair to some but my sister will probably contribute 50% of her paycheck and me 15% to 20%. NTA what kind of person wants to put the responsibility on a 15-year-old to help when they could? You were right in what you said. Your sister is a lazy bum. That's it. She should have to get a job as well. Next story. My 20-year-old son who at 18 moved to live in the country six hours away with my parents after he graduated high school started to feel lonely so he got a puppy off some farm. Shortly after that he decided he wanted to come back home. So he did, puppy and all. Then he got a job working on the road and wasn't home for nearly six months. During that six months I raised and trained this amazing border collie. I'm her human, she's my life. She's incredibly intelligent and very well trained as I've always been good at training dogs. Then my son comes back from the job on the road and picks back up with his dog but she loves us both. However he just starts playing video games 15 hours a day talking to a girl he met in the video game and not giving her the attention she needs. She's very highly active. I take her daily to the park to throw the frisbee and get her running time in. He then is home for another six months and then decides he wants to move from Texas to Maine to live with the girl he met in the video game even though they had never met. So then he finally gets a job, saves enough money to get a plane ticket and leaves. I ask him what about the dog. He says well you just watch her for now and I'll come back and get her in six months or so. I know this will be so hard and I'm very against this. I'm already so attached and pay for everything. I offered to buy her $500 to help with his trip. I beg him crying and pleading it's cruel to her too. This is her home. We have another dog. They are best friends. She sleeps on me every night. She goes with me everywhere. We are incredibly close. I've never been so bonded with a dog. Well, the six months is approaching and he's talking about coming to get her to live in an apartment and he works six to seven days a week supporting the girl that doesn't have a job and her family. I want to just say no but I love my son and it is his dog at the end of the day. I don't want to hurt our relationship but I know he won't take care of her like she needs to be taken care of and I'm her world too. My son gets super angry anytime I bring it up that I think it's wrong to take up. I'm so distraught over this. Ada. Edit to clarify. I have tried to talk rationally to my son many times. I've been firm. I've tried to appeal to his common sense and I've begged in full tears every day just thinking she'll be gone soon kills me. It's just a very strong no, it's my dog from him. I told him I wasn't going to watch her when he left. My family gave me grief that I was being unfair and should help my son so I agreed after a huge blowout fight. Now that I want to tell him no he can't take her. My 19 year old daughter in college and at home also says well it's his dog mom you can't do that. She is starting to see my side though. 
The dog is obsessed with me as I am her. I just work and spend time with the dog. That's my life. I'm divorced and give her my full attention. I also have my roommate and my daughter here, so she's rarely ever left alone. We have a big yard for her to run. My son does say he's paying me back for food toys bet costs and everything but has yet to do so, and when he was home and not working all the time I was the one paying for everything. The first time he was working on the road he did send money to help. Money shouldn't matter anyway. He sees it simply as it's his dog. End of the story. I don't want to lose the relationship with my son, either but he thinks I'm the asshole for even arguing about it. Go get the dog chipped in your name and outright refuse. That dog is going to be trapped in an apartment all day. That will wreak havoc on its physical and psychological health. Pets don't deal well with moving. He has constantly neglected the dog. The dog will suffer if he takes it. At the end of the day, it isn't his dog. He abandoned it for six months. Doesn't pay any of the bills for it, etc. Next story. My grandparents passed away recently. I followed the guidelines my grandma set up for her final event. Her church, her burial plot, her casket, and the same for my grandpa. I just didn't expect for it to be a joint funeral. I sent out the notifications to friends of theirs and family after the date was set in stone. Their friends all came. So did most of my grandma's church, but no family showed up. I wasn't surprised I hadn't seen most of them in about four years. I had a great time with my grandparents' friends, and then I went back home and cried my heart out. I had been their sole caregiver, and I didn't know what to do without them. I had taken care of them for 15 years. It started with little things like lifting heavy things and escalated to needing to change the bed twice a night sometimes. I was empty and started to scroll through my grandpa's Facebook to see pictures he posted before his memory went. I found a group, started about three years ago that was being flooded with activity. When I went poking around I found out it was my mother who was hosting a funeral at her church and was trying to get final expenses taken care of I was stunned. Here was the woman I hadn't spoken to since throwing her out of the house for stealing jewelry and upsetting grandma terribly by using her Alzheimer's against her. How could you forget my birthday? You promised to give me this I went to the funeral my mother had planned and listened to the pastor and then my mother got up to talk. She told everyone how hard it was taking care of them and something inside me roared to life. I don't remember everything I said. But it did include that she didn't pay for anything for them. Not their caskets, not their burial plots, not their cremation. Nothing. I told everyone I put them to rest at the funeral grandma planned herself four days prior. I said she'd never paid for any of their care or even seen them for four years. I was asked to leave and drove home. Later a cousin asked me if what I said was true and when I said it was and I could provide proof, they explained my mother had been taking funds from the family for years to pay for their care at a facility because they had outlived their insurance policy. They also explained I got a lot of people in trouble because somewhere in the speech I shouted I had done it all alone for years without any help. A lot of family members used my grandparents as an excuse to get out of work and had invited their co-workers to the funeral. By hearing my outburst they were now in trouble for lying as for the reasons to leave work or miss days. She then went on to ask me about the inheritance and when that would be passed out. I told her that if anyone had earned the inheritance it had already been taken care of. I thought I was in the right. But now I'm doubting myself after so many cousins and family members are calling to tell me I handled it really poorly. Ada? Did I handle this badly? Everyone's telling me I did. Update thank you all. I felt I was the asshole because of how badly I reacted at the memorial service my mother held. It was very far out of character for me. I am usually very quiet and I don't talk too often, much like my grandpa. I screamed at them. I cried. I waved my arms and made an absolute spectacle of my grief. I feel so embarrassed by how I argued and carried on. Several family members are asking questions and seem genuinely bewildered by the circumstances. This happened on Sunday and it's Friday now. I am still feeling as lost as I did at first. One of my uncles did lose his job. That was confirmed earlier. He had multiple schemes going on at his workplace with a need for a medical lift bed for grandma and got his co-workers to donate around 8,000 in total. The gossip queens that attended the funeral told everyone Monday morning and by Monday afternoon he was in trouble with HR. This wasn't the only way he tried to earn funds. There are at least two others I know about from his son. His son, my cousin, is furious with his dad and my mom. He and several other cousins of mine are suing my mother for taking funds from them. They thought they were helping pay for 24-hour care at an assisted living facilities. Every month my mother was collecting between 2,000 and 9,000 from family members. She would lament to them how hard and soul-crushing it was to see such strong people just staring vacantly off into space, how they were unresponsive but this wasn't true. My cousins apologized for not reaching out to me, but I'm not very close with anyone in my family. Some of you guessed it in the DMs, but yeah, I was an affair baby.
I came out wrong and my mother's husband divorced her over it. The people I was closest to growing up were my grandparents. It's bad enough that some of the cousins forgot I was a family member at all. It's a huge mess. They're apologizing, but I just don't want anything to do with them. Grandpa's business is not worth millions, but it pays the bills. It's a handyman company. My family is asking about the company, how everything is going there and I'm putting up a stony face. It's not the family business, it's mine, and it has been for years. All of the employees respect me because I treat them the same way Grandpa did. I do still mess up some things that they tease me for. It's a very friendly place to work. One of Grandpa's properties is just a fenced-in yard with covered storage for the different projects. It's right next to the business property and is just where we work on remodeling old RVs or turning vans into RVs. We have a few friends parked there too, but it's just a dirt lot with gravel, a fence, and a cover. There are some security cameras there and so far no issues. I thought I would give an overall update and just thank you all for the support. I felt so lost and I really did think I was tough for exposing them. Jobs are important and hard to come by out here and it's not just going to affect them. It's going to affect their partners, their children, and even their pets. I feel most guilty about who else exposing them affected. Thank you, I really didn't expect this to blow up like it did. I'm going to keep reading and responding to comments. Thank you all again, this has been so incredible. I was never supposed to be angry about anything, but seeing all the comments cussing out my family has been more cathartic than I can express. Thank you.